defensive strategy? Um, well, I think uh, that strategy that I mentioned that when we were at Villanova of standing in our zone and yelling miss, that worked pretty well. So I think we're going to stick with that for a while. Um, you know, trying to play man to man, trying to change things up a little bit. It's going to be a little bit of a challenge for right now until some of our guys grow up a little bit. Um, but for the most part, I think we have, uh, you know, we have two teams, you know, we're, we're the team that can play good defense at times and we're the team that struggles defensively at times, but it's not anything I didn't expect. You know, it's not like it's a surprise. I mean, I knew there were going to be some things we were going to struggle with because some of the people that we're putting in out there just have not played at this level, played college basketball. Um, so as we get better at it, which we don't really have a lot of time to get better at it because we're playing the best offensive team that we've played up to date tomorrow. So we're a work in progress. As everybody likes to say, when they hate what they have, we're a work in progress. Doug, you Thanks. want to go ahead? Hey, Gino. Um, yeah. After a week off, you know, with DePaul now, would you, is this the timing, you, you know, you would want to play a team that plays this uh, type of, you know, as fast as they do, or would you prefer to have a game under your belt or does it not matter? You know, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters uh, when you play DePaul, because if you, uh, you know, if you think about it, there's nobody really that plays like they do. So actually it may, it may be coming at a decent time, given how Villanova plays, you know, with all the movement and um, the amount of threes that want to go up, you know, Villanova took 39 threes against us and made 11. Um, you know, there's nothing you can do about that. Um, you're, you're, you're just going to have to do a really good job of making sure that they're, they're not easy to come by, but they're going to get them. And DePaul's the same way. DePaul's going to score a lot of points. I mean, they're averaging almost 90. They're averaging 88. So they're going to score a bunch of points against us. The trick is, can we limit how they get them? And that's a good challenge for us, whether it's now or whether it's a week from now or a month from now. It's a good challenge for us. So it's probably coming at a really good time. It's coming at a really good time because we have a bunch of practices right after um, DePaul so that we're going to get a lot to work on for sure come Tuesday night. Alexa. Hey, Gino. Hey. Uh, just kind of going off those last two questions, you've mentioned it, but DePaul's a hard team to play because of their style, no matter who's on the team. But when you have six freshmen and you know seven newcomers overall, is there a way to, I mean, how much can you actually do to prepare them for a challenge like that versus do they just have to know by getting thrown into the fire tomorrow and seeing how they, you know, DePaul plays with their press and their, their pace and their threes and just hope they figure it out and score enough points to beat them. Right. Right. I remember, uh, I remember when Maya Moore was a freshman and you know, we had a pretty young team and we went out to DePaul and, uh, Late in the second half, we were down 17. And somehow or another, we came back and won the game. I have no idea. But when you have a young team, DePaul can make you look silly. And it's, it, it's impossible to prepare your kids for something like that. Because we don't have – our second team can't rep, duplicate what they do, replicate what they do. They can't. So maybe if we have practice players that could go that fast – and move that quickly and jack up that many shots. It may be a little bit easier, but we just can't simulate it in practice. We can't. Uh, so they're just going to have to figure it out on the go. Do the best we can. As I said, try to limit how many, 
how many shots they get from where they get them. And then, you know what you got to do? You got to convert at the other end. You got to convert at the other end. And that's one of the things that's always helped us in past years is, you know, we've been able to, to have really good offensive games against them. And that's offset whatever we don't do well defensively. Carl, you want to go ahead? You know, I don't know what you do with as far as watching tapes of past games like last year's, but will you show them any of last year's game, like the first half being so great for you, and then the third quarter when it seemed like you could do nothing right? Well, again, that was pretty indicative of our team, wasn't it, last year? You know, where we would we would have moments of greatness, and then we would, you know, rest on our laurels and fall apart. And I think the situation is not that much different this year. To be honest with you, it's not that much different. We, um, we could very easily play just as well as we played in that first half. And we could just as easily play two or three quarters as bad as we played that third quarter last year. Um, so it's a, it's a good game for us to play. Let's put it that way. And, uh, you know, DePaul, uh, I hope it doesn't come back to bite me, but I think I said this about Louisville last year, right? What's our record against DePaul all time? 17 and one. What is it? 17 and one. When the hell did we lose to him? 82, 83. Ah, <laughs> that doesn't count. I'm talking about since I've been here. What's our record? 17 and 17 0? And 17 and 0. It's the same, you know, with Louisville. We hadn't lost to Louisville since, uh, you know, Ronald Reagan was president or somebody. 93. Know. Yeah, whenever the hell that was. So the reason Bruno wants to keep playing us, he's smart, is because if they keep putting themselves in that situation, they're going to kick our butt one day. So that's the day is probably coming. And when we have a really young team, that could be the day. So it's great for us to be in a game where, you know, we have to play at a real high level at both ends of the floor. But we have to play at a real high level, mostly on the offensive end of the floor tomorrow mostly on the offensive end because defensively you're only going to do so much this is like an nba game you're not going to keep them from scoring you're not going to keep them from doing all the crazy stuff that they do but you have to convert at the other end for sure joe zone you want to go ahead yeah gino to follow up on that can you um impact what they do offensively by changing what you do offensively whether that slow down the game you said you got to make shots but could you change the pace of the way you normally like to play so they don't get as many opportunities? Yeah, uh, that's common. The common way of thinking is let's slow the game down. Let's slow the game down and limit how many possessions they get, which is probably a really smart thing to do. But if you watch this play five games, the only time we're any good is when? Boom, boom, boom. When we're running up and down. Yeah. So if I slow my guys down too much, they're going to fall asleep. <laughs> Doesn't take much. You know, they're like Curly in the Three Stooges, you know? They get hypnotized really quickly. So I got to get them moving, 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 moving. But we got to do it smart. We got to do it smart. Go to Charlotte and then Eric. Hi, Gino. I just wanted to kind of ask how Aaliyah and Nika are doing. How what? How Aaliyah and Nika are doing. And if they'll be ready for tomorrow as planned. Yeah, they're doing they're doing well. I mean, they they both, you know, we practice uh what, 26, 27, 28? Three days. And they practice all three of those days. And they look good. They look good. And I expect less 
something comes up. I expect both of them to play and be impact players tomorrow. And certainly with their energy and their, you know, ability to, to guard, you know, uh, they're going to, they're going to really be valuable coming into uh, uh, tomorrow. Eric, you want to go ahead? Sticking with the health theme, Gino, as a journalist, I'm just curious. I, I love the multitasking, the laser-like focus on the answers, but also the pill counting. How many pills do we have going right now, bud? He muted. Gino, you got to unmute. You're muted. We missed the whole answer. Oh. Yeah, I am multitasking. I'm counting my pills. A little levity I just want to bring into it. No, no, it's good because it made me look down and I just checked. And according to this, now the way I'm scheduled, I'm, I'm scheduled to OD on Thursday because I got too many in one box and not enough in the other box. <laughs> Carl, you want to go ahead? Thank you. Gino, slightly off topic, what was your reaction when you found out that Duke was canceling its season? Uh, I was really surprised. You know, um, you know, you never know the whole story. You never know uh, what, you know, what anyone's motivation is. So uh, there had to have been some circumstances within the program that, um, you know, brought about that decision uh, and you know it, it it is what you know as they say it is what it is I mean it was decision made at Duke to we 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 don't feel good about going forward and then somebody asked me do you think more programs will do that who knows I mean in this in this particular year there isn't anything that's you say well that, that's crazy no I mean who would have thought, right? And um, surprising, surprising, obviously, very surprising, but um, unexplainable. Uh, no, totally explainable, just very, very surprising. Does anyone have any other questions for coach? I thought you could see that. Could you guys actually see my poll box? I saw over your shoulder a little bit earlier. No, wow. but you're 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 counting them. You can tell they're not. In the no way, way, no way. You didn't see anything over my shoulder. That's baloney. <laughs> I saw. You just saw anything over my shoulder. Over my shoulder, there's like a CVS sign. I can open my own pharmacy right here. Coach, you can hear them too. You can hear them. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Can I? Do you mind if I asked you what was going through my mind when you heard Jay Wright tested positive? We're all we all know and love Jay, and just what we were through. You just saw him last week. Crazy I know, day. I know, right? I know, I did. I saw him last week and I thought right away to myself, I said, wow, I've been tested twice already since I got back from Villanova. So, you know, I feel, you know, I feel good about it, but it just goes to show you, you know, it just goes to show you. I don't think this is the first pause that Villanova's had, correct? On the men's side? I don't, I don't think this is the first two. one. Two. I think it's, it's happened. over the summer. Okay, I think it's happened before. And you just never know. You have no idea. You have no idea how any of this, you know, happens. You know, you take every precaution in the world. You know, people say, well, you know, uh, you want to try to mitigate risk. Okay, so that means you're, you know, you. I don't think the word mitigate means eliminate. It just means you're trying to mitigate it. So we all do that, but we really can't eliminate it. We can't make it go away. So I'm glad he feels okay. You know, I'm, I'm uh, obviously, you know, um, whenever you, whenever you see that, uh, and I'm a lot older than he is. So, you know, I think we all, you know, we all have that going through our mind every day, you know? It's constant with us. It's it's constant. There's no getting around it. You know, um, you know, you could wake up in the morning and get a phone call that DePaul's not coming. 
I mean, they're all coming. I mean, they're, they are going to get here. They are working out here tonight. So um, it's, it's just, again, it's unlike anything I've ever, I've ever seen, really. Um, it's like any, unlike anything anywhere. It's 2021, can't, can't get here fast enough. You know, there's years you go, wow, which time would slow down? You know, I'm getting old. Man, this is one of those years where, like, I can't wait till the year ends. I can't wait till 2021. I'm glad my mother, I'm glad my mother's not in charge of the vaccines either. She's, she's pissed that young, uh, that old people are getting vaccines and she's 89. She goes, ah, you got to give it to the young people. They have a lot to live for us old people, you know, uh, but, but, and I'm trying to think to myself, damn, man, I'm old. Be quiet. Don't let that get out. You know, did you see that Adia Barnes in Arizona said college athletes should get fast, fast tracked for the vaccine? Really? can look it up. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. Um, mm -mm. No, I mean, again, uh, everybody's got their, their take on all this. Everyone's got their take on it. And everyone, you know, listen. If 18 to 30 year olds should get fast track, it's because they're super spreaders. They go out, they do things, you know, they're out and about just naturally. So if you want to say all college kids should, yeah, but I don't think there's anything special about what college athletes do. I mean, yeah, we're here playing and, you know, you see some teams just opt out, some kids opt out, but, you know, I think fast track should be for like restaurant bar owners, bartenders, <laughs> you know, Essential media workers, members, media all the members. other essential workers, you know, first responders, nurses, doctors, nursing homes, bar owners, restaurant owners, bartenders, this is them all under essential owners. That would be me. <laughs> Alexa, you want to go ahead? Hey, I just wanted to, um, I was curious, are you guys thinking of adding a game in between DePaul and Baylor or is it just going to? stick as is, um, barring any other weird scheduling issues. Well, you know, ever since that time opened up, which is crazy because we were going to play a couple games, we've been looking, but nothing. We've been looking, we've been looking, we've been looking. We tried, but nothing, nothing's, nothing's come of it. So I wish I could sit here and tell you, yeah, hey, listen, we're playing the ninth, uh, the 29th, and then we're playing the third or the second or the fourth, whatever, but we got nothing. Nothing. Nope. Now, that means we could get a phone call tomorrow. We could get a phone call tomorrow. Walls could put out another tweet and go, hey, you want to play? Who the hell knows? Roger, you want to go ahead? <laughs> You know, is, is there anything you see with your team right now, an energy, a focus, an efficiency in practice that lets you know you're ready for a game like DePaul? Uh, there, there are things that we're doing that are pretty good. There are things that we're doing that are pretty good, that we're getting better at. Uh, I don't know you know, that um, we're where we want to be, obviously, but uh, our offense is getting better. Our movement is getting better. Uh, our understanding is getting better. Our transition defense has to get way better, for sure. Um, you know, these three days, 26, 27, 28, it's kind of been the longest time that we've had in a while to, to, to practice consecutively. And after the DePaul game, we'll have a bunch of days before the Baylor game. So hopefully we can just keep building on, um, you know, on those things that we need to get better at. Toward that end, you, you chastised your juniors early in the season about not playing with enough energy and focus, and, and Kristen has certainly responded since then. Do you see that continuing? I mean, did the light go on for her senior year? Um, 
you know, it's always it's always a, a challenge, I think, when, you know, you get past your sophomore year and and you've been in a, a pretty good place freshman, sophomore year. You know, you. Uh, I think I, has Kristen scored a thousand points already. I think she has, hasn't she? She's at nine, nine, eight because you pulled her when she scored her thousand. Yeah, you called the timeout. Oh, really? Yes. Your oh. substitution timeout was in the middle of her thousand point layup. Really? Come on, who wants to get their thousand point in a 30 point win on a layup on the road? Stop it. I hope she gets 30 tomorrow night. Then I'll, I'll be happy. So, you know, Kristen's had two really good years at Connecticut. You know, you scored, you know, a thousand points, you know, pretty much two years. You had a pretty good two years. And then, you you know, all of a sudden you get into junior year and you want to elevate that. You want to get better at that. At what? You want to get better at shot selection. You want to get better at, you know, making the shots you do get. You want to get, you know, better defensively. You want to get, you know, you know better at, at, at the things that help elevate you. And, um, and I thought, you know, that first game, it wasn't there. And, and maybe it was, you know, maybe trying too hard or maybe just one of those things. But, um, but Kristen seems way more relaxed and more, you know, uh, part of the flow and what we're doing and, and things are happening, you know, in a, in a natural way instead of being forced. So um, she's had a couple of really, really good days since we've been back. And, um, and that goes for Liv as well. You know, uh, for E, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't hold E to the same, you know, standard pretty much because she's just working her way back. But certainly Liv and E, I mean, Liv and, and Kristen have got to be rocks. You know, they've got to be solid. We've talked about that. And I think the last three or four games, they have been. They really have been. Gabby, you want to go ahead? Yeah, Gino, every year when I've asked this, this time of the year, you've made it abundantly clear you don't like New Year's resolutions, but it's 2020. So has that changed for you? Do you have a New Year's resolution? Um, well, I don't, I don't know that I have a, so much a, a, a resolution as I have aspirations, you know, I want 2021 to be 180 from 2020. Uh, I want it to be completely different. I want it to be a whole nother, whole nother experience for everybody, for, for us you know, and what we do for our parents and grandparents, those of us that have them, um, for our grandkids and kids, those of us that have them. Uh, I, want, I want it to just be different. I want it to be better. Um, you know, but in terms of New Year's resolution, I told my team the other day when I saw them, that I wanted to be a little more um, cognizant of all the great things that we do. And um, at the same time, you know, be able to focus on the things that we don't do well. So, uh, you know, my New Year's resolution, you know, I want to be able to be better at seeing both sides of the coin instead of just trying to obsess about the things that I have to fix, you know, coaches by nature are fixers and you go to practice every day. I got to fix this. 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 And I need to, I think with a young team like this, a very young team, I need to be also very aware of the, of the really good things that we do and really try to accentuate those things. Um, so I would say if I can do that, which by the way, they were very skeptical. They told me, you know, that will last like half a day. 
to our first practice, but I'm going to try to prove them wrong. You know, I'm going to try to be, be that person. Um, I want to, you know, drink less wine, but that'll even let that, that'll last less than my other one about being more positive. So there goes two that ain't going to happen. <laughs> so I'm over two, I think even before, but I'm going to try, I'm going to try, I'm going to try those two things. Actually, no, I'm only going to try the first part. I'm not even going to try the second part. Forget it. Not going to happen. Why would I? 